How's it going everybody out in YouTube land? This is the very first installment of the driving video vlog that I want to uh, start doing. I want to try and do it every day and this is going to be the very first attempt. I already did a live video over on Instagram today. Uh, you can go check that out if you'd like and I'm going to be covering pretty much the same topic but I just wanted to shoot it again because I'm trying to get more practice in front of the camera and just get more practice talking. Without further ado, let's get after it. Today we are talking about four things that I think are more important than a college education for the average person. Uh, a little while ago, and you guys have heard me talk about this a lot, we talked about how college isn't for everybody, and I think a lot of people wake up to the fact that college is a little bit of a scam. Um, not everybody needs college, not everybody benefits from college, um, and in fact a lot of people up spending a lot of money and not getting much out. So, for those of you who um, are maybe deciding that they don't want to, I'm going to try and keep the home still minimal, so we'll see what happens. For those of you who are deciding maybe college isn't for you, I see a lot of people talking to you, reaching out to you, saying kind of, you know, exactly what everybody's saying. Work hard, get a job, blah, blah, blah. There's not a lot of people who are giving you actionable things that you can do or focus on that will make your lives easier in the long run. I'm someone who didn't go to college. I don't suggest going to college. I never, I don't think I would have been in a better situation had I gone to college. In fact, I think I would have been a much worse one because school was never my thing and I always just wanted to get into the workforce. So I joined the workforce when I was 18 and I went through a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. I think I learned a thing or two, and I'm hoping that I can maybe save you guys from some of the mistakes that I made doing that. So the first thing that I wish that someone had told me about when I first got out of high school is my credit score. When I got out of high school, my credit score was the last thing I cared about. I figured I would never need it, um, and I figured that it was dumb, and it was just... You know, nothing I never needed to worry about. I got a credit card, I paid most of it back. Um, then I kind of gave up on it, ended up going into collections, I ended up paying it off many years later. Uh, but that alone pretty much tanked my credit. That was the only credit I had other than my car, which I was always kind of late on. I, it's not that I didn't have the money, I just didn't really care. And I didn't really think it mattered, so I would blow my money on other stupid stuff rather than pay my bill. And that ultimately led to me having a very low credit score. Fast forward to 2018 when I decided to buy a house. And I couldn't get a loan because my credit sucked. Not only could I not get a loan, I had to go find someone to co-sign for me. That's a whole other story because at the time I was getting kicked out of my house, out of my apartment. Not for not paying, um, just because they were selling the property, I needed to find a new place to live. I had a dog who was very large and nobody would accept us as tenants because of her. So I decided to buy a house instead. Little did I know that that was extremely difficult. I ended up finding a co-signer who had very good credit and they were able to help me out. However, because my credit was so terrible, I ended up paying a lot of money up front and I also ended up paying a lot more money monthly. So, for as a real world example, a very good friend of mine at that time was also buying a house. They bought a house in the same area as me, almost the exact same house as me, for, except it was a little bit nicer. It was, the inside was redone and stuff. It was about $10,000 more than mine, I believe. ten dollars or $15,000 more than my house. They had to come forward with almost no money down and they were able to get a very low payment monthly because their credit was almost 800. Mine was just over 600, it was awful. Um, and I ended up having to come up with like $14,000 down payment. And then on top of that, I needed to buy like additional like insurances for the bank and stuff, mortgage insurance and stuff that protects the bank in case I default, which is about an extra $300 a month. And then along with some other things, a higher a higher risk payment and, and higher interest, 
I'm paying about $400 or more a month than my friends who paid less or who paid more money for the actual house came forward with less cash. And overall, I really got screwed because of my shitty credit. Um, my credit is much better now. I've been working on it for the last couple of years. I'm getting ready to refinance and hopefully I'll be able to get a much better deal. But as much as you think that your credit is not important, please, please listen to me and just believe me that it is and that you should really pay attention to your credit and do your best to kind of boost it up. It's very easy to do. It takes 15 minutes a month maybe, 20 minutes a month of just looking at it, seeing where you need to go, paying off your credit cards, etc., etc., um, to make sure that you kind of got yourself all set. Please do it. It's very, very important. And you're going to feel like it's not, and I cannot stress to you enough that I just how much I really regret not worrying about it to begin with. The second thing that I wish to, the second thing I wish that I had paid attention to when I was first getting out of high school and I had decided not to go to college was savings. Again, money was never my strong suit until very recently. Um, I never paid attention to it. I didn't care. My thought was always I could die tomorrow and then all that money I saved would be wasted. Now, looking back, if I had started saving money when I first got out of high school, today I would probably be extremely, extremely comfortable. By if I had been kind of understood what I understand now about investing and saving and putting your money into certain places to build money um, and make your money work for you, I would be very, very comfortable. I may not be retired or, or able to live without working, but I would not have spent as much time since then struggling. So do yourselves a favor and what if you're lucky enough to be one of those people who gets to live at home, if you're lucky enough to be one of those people who doesn't have any bills when they're 18, do yourself a favor and take literally 75% of everything you make and just put it into a savings account. The highest interest one you can find. You can find some as believe as high as 2% right now. Just do it. It's you won't even notice it when you're as young as you are, you know, you might not be able to go out to eat as much with your friends, but you can't do that right now anyways. You may not be able to buy as much stupid stuff off Amazon. Just trust me. In, so I believe it is, if you put away 75%, don't quote me on this, look it up yourself. Um, just type into the internet, FIRE, F-I-R-E, Financial Independence Retire Early Calculator. So if you look up a Financial Independence Calculator, it will be able to tell you how much money you need to make to retire early. A quick rule of thumb is if you take 75% of your paycheck and put it and save it, just put it into a savings account, um, within, I think it's eight years, you'll be able to replace the amount of money that you make yearly completely. Um, and I believe that's what the savings account, I could be wrong, so just look into it. Um, it could be with an, I think actually not I'm talking about, it, it might be an index fund. So if you take 75% of what you make, put it into an index fund, within eight years you will be able to re completely replace that income with nothing but the money you generate from that index fund. Which means if you make $20,000 a year and you put 75% of that away every month or every year, after eight years, you will make $20,000 a year without ever having to do anything. So just think about how amazing that is. You will always have $20,000 a year. There's a million blogs, there's a million videos, there's a million websites all about financial independence. Just look it up. I cannot, again, this is huge. If I had known about this when I turned 18, then I would not be working because I have to. I would be working because I want to. I'm not one of those people who's ever going to retire, probably. I'm going to probably work until I'm dead. But it would be nice to have the option. <laughs> um, so just do yourselves a favor, look into it. That's the number two thing I wish that people had told me. So, so far we have credit score, we have savings. The number three thing that I would have wanted someone to tell me about, and actually I was lucky because I did have a boss and um, who was a good friend of mine, family, um, and also my parents that they encouraged me to save in a, in a retirement account. 
but not just any retirement account. What you want to do is you want to get a job that has retirement benefits and you want to invest in the account that they that you can pay through before taxes. Basically your business will take a percentage of your your employer will take a percentage of your paycheck and invest it on your behalf into a fund that's completely yours. That fund will follow you wherever you go forever. It's not the company's but they will uh, they'll just do it for you, they'll have it behind the scenes, so it'll never make, even make its way into your paycheck, you'll never even notice it, you'll never miss it. Um, what's really nice about it is that most jobs will do what's called a match. So they will match the amount that you put in up to a certain percentage of your paycheck. So let's say I decide to do $25 every week, they will also put in $25 a week. That's huge. Right, so the average uh, like index fund makes like seven or eight percent a year. What I'm talking about is every time you put money in, you're going to automatically make a hundred percent return on your investment. That's massive. So instead of putting in twenty-five dollars at a time, you put in fifty dollars at a time. That does two things. One, it, it obviously it gives you hundred percent. You would have to lose an unbelievable amount of money to still lose on that investment. The second thing it does is it lets you generate income faster, or lets you generate into that faster, so that way you can build up money faster, you can uh, take advantage of retiring or retiring faster. Um, again, it's not just about retirement. This is uh, Those retirement funds you can't even dip into until you're, you're of retirement age, but it'll be nice when you are of retirement age and you want to take some time off and um, you know kind of spend the next half of your life doing something else, that you'll have that money there. One of literally the stupidest thing you can do is not do a full match because it's literally free money that they're just giving you. Um, in fact, I would go so far as to say rather than take your yearly raise, I would rather have a percentage, an increased percentage of my um, retirement paid for. So like instead of 3%, if they offered me you know, whatever my raise is or another 1% of my retirement fund, I would 100% of the time take 1% of my retirement fund every single time. Do it, it, take, it comes up before taxes. Just, it's so smart and so, it's so smart and it's so easy and you'll never even miss it. So that's number three. Number three is retirement fund. Number four. Number four is the most important thing that a human being can do. I don't care if you go to college or if you don't go to college, the most important thing you can do is manage your network and build your network. So network is a word we hear thrown around a lot by like entrepreneurs and we hear it thrown around a lot by, you know, white collar workers. And basically what a network is, is just the people you know. Humans are made to work together. It's how we do best, it's how we work best. Every great achievement has only ever been achieved by multiple people. Oftentimes only one person gets the credit, but it's almost always a collaboration of some kind. There's been a lot of studies done, I shouldn't say a lot, I've seen, I think I've seen three, that were done that showed that the benefit of college is not the education you receive, the benefit of college is actually the friends and connections you make that will follow you through for the rest of your life that will allow you to um, you know, live the rest of your life with people. There's, amongst all the friends I know, if I ever have a problem in my house, I always have someone I can call. If I ever have a problem in my car, I always have someone I can call. If I ever need, there's literally nothing I could need or want that I could not find someone for very easily. Um, just because I've made it a point to work on developing those connections and making those friends. It sounds like what I'm saying is like, you should make friends only to get benefits, but that's not the case. All I'm saying is that your friends that you make can help you. Knowing how they can help you and working together is how you can kind of become more than you are. So it's just something to think about. Hope you guys like this video. That's four things that are more important than college degree. First one was, First one was, uh, wow, totally drew a blank on it. First one was credit score. 
keeping an eye on your credit score, getting a good credit score. Two, the ability to save. Three, investing in your retirement. And four, building your network. Guys, if you do these four things, start early when you're 18, 19, and do these now in 10, 15 years, just the possibilities are endless and your ability to live a good life are gonna be, you know, way, way more. So do me a favor and just do them. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.